This morning we're celebrating Earth Day. Our very special guests are the Edmonton chapter of the Raging Grannies, who you see before you. We're gathered today on Treaty 6 territory, a land that is rich in history, some small part of it being the history of settlers who've lived and worked here, and most of it being in the hearts and minds of the religious, sorry, of the indigenous peoples who have inhabited and stewarded this land through countless centuries, countless millennia. I was born and have lived my life on Treaty 6 land. I grew up near the neutral hills, and that was a traditional meeting area of Indigenous peoples for thousands of years. And they're doing all kinds of archaeology out there these days. I've lived here in Amiskwichi, Waskahegan for all but a year and a half of my adult life. And here too, we find that our River Valley Flats have been another traditional Indigenous meeting ground. As part of Treaty 6, the land around Westwood here was promised to the Indigenous peoples of the Pappas Chase Group. We, the people of Westwood, are working to make this part of our history better known. We provide office space to the group for their work in seeking justice. And our next speaker in the Beyond Land Acknowledgements series is the chief of that group. Chief of the Pappas Chase is Darlene Missick. She's a great speaker. She'll be here on Friday, March 10th. May, thank you. <laughs> Don't go backwards, Jacqueline, forwards. <laughs> in this small way and others, the people of Westwood are participating in the ongoing process of truth, reconciliation, and healing. So, Tobao, bienvenue, welcome to Westwood Unitarian, everyone whether you're here in the building or joining us online. I am so glad to be with you in this gathering. I offer a particular welcome this morning to those who are first time visitors or consider themselves newcomers or are returning after an extended absence. Westwood is a compassionate community of free religious thought, inviting all people to rest, grow and serve the world. This, serving, this morning, our service, as always, is a collaborative effort. My name is Jacqueline Willette. I'm your service leader. My pronoun is she. The Raging Grannies are our musicians and our speaker this morning. Tech hosting is being provided by Hannah. And she has backup from Carl Ulrich beside her there and Bill Lee, who's online. And I just saw David Williamson He's our coffee host. It's always so good when you see his face, isn't it? And we have to also remember the behind the scenes work done by our worship committee, of whom we've got one, two, three. Three members of that committee are sitting here this morning, reaping the joy of their work, which is a great thing. For people on Zoom, if you have a chalice or candle nearby and wish to light it for the service, now is the time. Glory be to the earth and to the wind. Glory be to the sun and the rain. Glory be to animals and children. Glory be to our holy flame. This flame calls us together as one. No music yet. I know we're always singing by this time, aren't we? But we're saving that for the grannies this morning. What we're going to do instead is just go straight to candles of joy and concern. And this is a moment in our week when we take the opportunity to express something important that's going on in our lives and the lives of those around us. To celebrate what brings us joy and to share what is weighing on our hearts. Every bit is important. We are here to listen to each other and to bear witness to the poignancy of life. And thus we build connections in our lives together. For those in the building, you're invited to come forward and speak, 
then light your candle as the next person speaks, or if you prefer, you can light a candle in silence. And we're also happy to bring the microphone to you if you prefer. People on Zoom, you get to light candles too. When the people in the room have finished lighting candles, I'm going to ask you if there's a candle that I can light for you as you speak your words. Anyone else from online? I'll light one final candle for all of those joys and concerns that are safely tucked away in our hearts. Could you join me please? in pronouncing our, uh, there we are, our affirmation is on the screen. May the light of these candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. No, I'm not going to let you sing yet, but there is a beautiful responsive reading that I'm going to ask Hannah to put on the screen. I'll read a bit, and then you will proclaim, and back and forth we'll go. Your answer each time will be, we are earth. Rem remember the earth whose skin you are, red earth, black earth, yellow earth, Brown earth. We are earth. Remember the plants, trees, animal life, who all have their tribes, their families, their histories too. Talk to them, listen to them. They are alive, living poems. Remember the wind. Remember her voice. She knows the origin of this universe. Remember, you are all people, and all people are you. Remember, you are this universe, and this universe is you. Remember, all is in motion, is growing, is you. Remember, language comes from this. Remember the dance language is, that life is, remember. So before we let the raging grannies loose, I would like to remind everyone about how much gratitude we have for all of those who contribute to our community. We talk about time and talent and treasure. Well, Rebecca's talent as our choir director, for instance, is just amazing. And the talent that Lorian has as our president and the time that she dedicates to it. And the treasure, well, that comes from each one of us to the extent that we're able. It might be that we donate on a regular basis through an auto automatic funds transfer. It might be that we do an e-transfer every now and then or leave some money in an envelope in the office door. However it is we do it, we all help make this community continue to thrive and serve the world. And we have a lot to be grateful for that we exist. And now, as promised, the Raging Grannies. Well, um, thank you for asking the Edmonton Raging Grannies to be your guests for this 2024 Earth Day. My name is Louise Swift, and I've been a Raging Granny since uh, the fall of 1992, 
when the government of the time had plans to privatize our healthcare system. But more about that later. Each granny will now introduce herself with a few words, starting with Audrey. I don't know what to say. My name is Audrey Brooks. I'm the retired chaplain at UCE. Whoa, whoa, whoa. My name is Audrey Brooks. I'm the retired chaplain at UCE. This is this is what you call an Audrey moment. You do it so well. I know. Thank you. Uh, my name is Audrey Brooks, and I'm the retired chaplain at UCE. Last night, I had the honor of performing in on behalf of the grannies at the, the youth drag show. And uh, it was hilarious. <laughs> it was fun. You should join us every month and, and see these young people. They are absolutely professional. They're wonderful. Um, I, I, I was going to light a candle, but I didn't want to stumble over this thing on the floor because I'm old and uh, my have been hosting Ukrainian uh, immigrants and refugees and I have uh, Oleg Maslov in the uh, Green Nuns Hospital he's going to be having a chemo uh, treatment so uh, I'm lighting a, a spiritual candle for him Thanks. My name is Liz Atchison. Um, I'm a fairly new raging granny, but I'm a real life granny to my three beautiful grandchildren, Carrick, Kane, and Caitlin. They live in near Salt Lake City at the moment, which is a bit of a drag. <laughs> they were in BC and it was easier to visit them there. But anyway, I look forward to seeing them hopefully over the summer. I love the raging granny spirit. Um, and I've been made to feel very welcome here, which is lovely. And I, I certainly approve of the causes that uh, we, we support. Anyway, I'll pass to Louise. Well, I'll just kind of pass on to you because I'm going to be speaking later. Okay. My name is Carmen Loisel. I'm the newest Raging Granny. Um, and I'm also uh, honored to be attending this um, lovely Westwood congregation. Um, I don't know what to say very much. Um, I just turned 65. Woohoo! <laughs> and things are really coming together. So I'm really happy. I'll just leave it at that. Hello, my name is Rosemary Falconer. I'm a longtime member of UCE. And I've been a raging granny in a serious way since I quit working in 2017. I'm, my name is Elvira. I'm originally from Romania. And I started with the Raging Granny from the beginning. This was 1969, I suppose. Uh, but before I started with the Raging Granny, I was with the Edmonton Social Planning Council, with a non -pro which is a non-profit organization and who uh, held a back lunch at at noon and they were always fighting uh, for homelessness for the unemployment for poor people and so on and i like this organization which is still uh, even today working for the poor and the homelessness if you, any of you know this hi um i don't know if i can add very much my name is Edda, and I've been with the Raging Grannies for some time. And it's uh, I, I support the, the philosophy of the Raging Grannies, helping other people. And uh, I enjoy being with people. Okay. My name is Anna Novikov, and I haven't been a Raging Granny that long, maybe four or five years. Um, one thing I'll say about myself um, is that I was in some serious car accidents and I still uh, have to deal with chronic pain. And one of the things that I did as a result, well, you know how life sort of moves you in different directions? Well, those accidents and the pain moved me into the, um, to taking a hobby 
of uh, holistic healing modalities. And I use those to help myself. And I also do that for other people, kind of on a part-time basis. But that's something that really warms my heart. Uh, well, two things, that I'm able to draw on my inner resources and on, I, I really believe that healing comes from the divine, like to, with our, healing comes from our connection with the divine. And I find that doing the work on myself or on other people helps me to connect more deeply with source energy. Thus, it kind of enlivens that in, in all of life. Like we're all contributing what we do and what we feel and what we contribute to society helps everyone. It just travels in the quantum field. That's all I'll say. Thank you. My name is Sylvia Crow, and I've been a raging granny for a long time. Ever since Premier Klein said that he wasn't able to privatize healthcare in Alberta because of two things, the raging grannies and the NDP. So then I knew what I had to join. <laughs> so, okay. Now we're going to get on to some things about Earth Day. On January 28, 1969, a well drilled by Union Oil six miles off the coast of Santa Barbara, California, blew out. Three million gallons of oil spilled. More than 10,000 seabirds, dolphins, seals, and sea lions died. The population was horrified. As a result, the first Earth Day in the United States was held on April 22, 1970. And still today, in Alberta's oil sands, up to 5,000 birds die annually from exposure to toxic substances. People in countries all over the world were concerned about clean air and clean water recognizing that since the advent of the nuclear age and advances in communication, it was easy, easy to see that unless action was taken, a healthy, sustainable world would not be possible. Even though World War II ended with the dropping of nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the war in Vietnam and the war in Korea were raging. Who can forget that in May of 1970, four students were killed and nine were wounded by American soldiers on the grounds of Kent State University, where these same students were protesting that their country, the United States, was fighting a war in Vietnam. Up until 1970, there were no governments departments or rules and regulations anywhere to protect the environment. There were some agreements about no more above ground nuclear testing, and there were meetings and discussions about acid rain, but it was easy to see that there was a need for an Earth Day worldwide and a need for legislation to protect the Earth. And still we are asking and waiting so we're going to begin our program of singing by doing our signature song, Hey Look Us Over. Hey, look at the sober, Granny's proud and strong. Time to hear our voices, time to hear our song. Silent for too long, speaking up at last. Cause now the earth is crying out and we must all respond by saying let's work together, build not destroy, teach love and kindness to every girl and boy, cause the planet's home to all of us, and that's the song we bring, hear the raging granny sing. Introduce Rosemary. Where did she go? Right there. And she's going to do a reading from Breaking Screen. 
street grass from Epiphany and the Beans. The exchange between plants and animals has shaped the evolutionary history of both. Farms, orchards, and vineyards are stocked with species we have domesticated. Our appetite for their fruits leads us to till, prune, irrigate, fertilize, and weed on their behalf. Perhaps they have domesticated us. Wild plants have changed to stand in well-behaved rows, and wild humans have changed to settle alongside the fields and care for the plants a kind of mutual taming. I sat once in a graduate writing workshop on relationship to the land. The students all demonstrated a deep respect and affection for nature. They profess without reservation that they love the earth. And then I asked them, do you think the earth loves you back? No one was willing to answer that. So I made it hypothetical and asked, what do you suppose would happen if people believed this crazy notion that the earth loved them back? Floodgates open. One student summed it up. You wouldn't harm what gives you love. My daughter Larkin is in graduate school now, studying food systems and working with urban gardeners, growing vegetables for the food pantry on land reclaimed from empty lots. At-risk youth do the planting and, and hoeing and harvesting. The kids are surprised that the food they harvest is free. They greet fresh carrots straight from the ground with suspicion at first until they eat one. Larkin is passing on the gift and the transformation is profound. In a garden, food arises from a partnership. If I don't pick rocks and pull weeds, I'm not fulfilling my end of the bargain. I can do these things with my handy opposable thumbs and my capacity to use tools. But I can no more create a tomato or embroider a trellis in beans than I can turn lead into gold. That is the plant's responsibility and their gift animating the inanimate. Now there is a gift. People often ask me what one thing I would recommend to restore relationship between land and people. My answer is almost always plant a garden. It's good for the health of the earth and it's good for the health of the people. A garden is a nursery for nurturing connection, the soil for cultivation of practical reverence and its power goes far beyond the garden gate. Once you develop a relationship with a little patch of earth, it becomes a seed itself. Something essential happens in a vegetable garden. It's a place where if you cannot say, I love you out loud, you can say it in seeds and the land will reciprocate in beans. Thank you, Rosemary. Does anybody mind if I sit down? <laughs> There are rich and granny groups across Canada, from Victoria to Halifax. Actually, because of a man named Ralph Nader, do you want me to hold it? Okay. There are rich and granny groups in the United States as well. He was in Edmonton as a speaker at a seminar sponsored by the Parkland Institute. And the title of his talk was The Differences Between the Medicare Systems in the United States and Canada. We sang our Medicare songs included What We Want from Healthcare, which ended up with our with us using these shorts. Can I hold that for a minute? And we offered these to Ralph Klein, but he wouldn't wear them. And they say, <laughs> keep Medicare public. No private parts. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and we were able to talk with him at length about the differences between their system and our system. But the focus of the American grannies was a bit different than our focus in Canada. 
They were concerned about their grandchildren having to fight wars in other countries. So they held sit-ins at recruiting centers with, with signs that said, take me instead of my grandchildren. Until COVID, raging grannies from all over North America met every two years at unconventions where we would exchange songs and talk together about what joint actions we could plan. Now the grannies are gonna sing our next song, which we learned at one of these unconventions. And they have to be unconventional. We can't be conventional as grannies, can we? So we're gonna sing the grannies are swarming. <laughs> The grannies are swarming with warnings of warming. It's time for reforming our country's great shame. So we'll keep performing our global informing till they stop deforming the earth in our name. The grannies are raving and raging today. To sing for the earth in our granny like way, with humor and hats and with voices raised high. We sing for the planet, the seas, and the sky. We sing for our children and grandchildren too. Our voices ring out loud and clear with the news. That capitalism is fouling our land. This can't continue, that's the grannies demand. The grannies are swarming with warnings of warming. It's time for reforming our country's great shame. So we'll keep performing our global informing. Till they stop deforming the earth in our name. Now, Paul Carmen, we're going to introduce you. Now we're going to read a poem uh, when I'm when I'm in the tree. Yes. So this is a shorter version of a longer poem, and it's by Mary Oliver. When I am among the trees, especially the willows and the honey locust, equally the beech, the oaks, and the pines, they give off such hints of gladness. I would almost say that they save me in daily. I am so distant from the hope of myself in which I have goodness and discernment and never hurry through the world, but walk slowly and bow often. Around me, the trees stir in their leaves and call out, stay a while. The light flows from their branches and they call again. It's simple, they say, and you too have come into the world to do this, to go easy, to be filled with light and to shine. Thank you, Carmen. Some of us, uh, the raging grannies here, were active in the 1960s and 1970s in various groups in Edmonton that were established to help refugees from Chile and Guatemala, many of whom came to Canada to escape imprisonment and death if they stayed in their home country. And um, in Edmonton, there were uh, there were three environmental groups established. Um, one was the Edmonton Anti-Pollution Group. On campus, there was the Interdisciplinary Committee for Environmental Quality and STOP, Save Tomorrow, Opposed Pollution. And these groups land, lasted well into the 1990s. By 1992, they were establishing raging granny groups across Canada. So our focus changed to a certain extent to include more social justice issues. For instance, hundreds of Albertans gathered on the steps of the legislature every week 
during the fall of 1992 and into the spring of 93, protesting the attempts of the Klein government to privatize our public sin single payer healthcare system. And surprisingly, that threat still continues today as successive conservative governments try different ways to privatize health care and other important social programs. Why do we keep doing this? Are privatization of health care and education still a problem in Alberta? Do we need legislation to protect the environment? Are there still wars happening in the world? And do we see images of civilians, the elderly, the young, the disabled suffering on television? As long as the answers to these questions is yes, the Edmonton Raging Grannies will be there to add their opinion to the dialogue. Have we been successful? It is interesting to note that during the Harper years, the Raging Grannies were declared a threat to the security of Canada, <laughs> along with Amnesty International and the Social Justice Committee of the United Church of Canada. So of course, we are successful and we will continue to sing. Our next song is called Reduce, Reuse, Recycle. And it reminds us that we all have a responsibility to do our part in protecting Mother Earth. Actually, this song is to the, to the tune of Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. And we sang this song at, in Camrose one time, and it was not well received for some reason. <laughs> so, reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce, reuse, recycle, replant, regenerate, rebuild, refuel, reforest and re-evaluate, revamp, react, recover, reclaim, recall, renew, rejoice and redistribute, reform, refine, refuse, resolve, respect, refinish, restore, re-educate, we found, we fill, we furbish, and we have We recoup, reflect, rebottle, repair, and recognize. We check, we fit, we kindle, respond, revitalize. Okay, now then we're going to introduce Anna with her poem. This is the great invocation for the creative uh, for the creation of sacred space, and this is a very sacred space that's already created. But I'll read the poem anyway. Kichi Manado, great creator, to the spirit keepers of the south, great Maqua, great Bear. Awaken from your great sleep and teach us to bring forward that which is inside of us, to have no past the way you have no past, to heal the stories that live inside of us. Thank you for holding and protecting our space in the medicine wheel. To the spirit keepers of the West, great Algonquin wolf, you who are the emotional one, who has emotions but are not governed by them, Teach us your authenticity. Help us to understand why we do what we do. Teach us your medicine. Help us to heal the hand that draws the bow. To the spirit keepers of the North, great owl, you who have seen beyond death and what lies beyond, you who sees what others choose not to see, who goes where others fear to go, Teach us to look deep inside of ourselves and see the parts of ourselves we choose not to see, 
to know it is all about us and to heal it all. Teach us your medicine. Help us to heal the false self and become. To the spirit keepers of the East, great beaver, you who are the master builder of life, the great solution provider, you who have mastered your relationship with the environment and know that circumstances accommodate you, teach us to engage the solution set like you do, to believe in all healing. Beautiful Mother Earth, you who have always held us with all that you are, you who has given unconditionally and provided for all of your children. Thank you for reminding us of who we are, our responsibilities to you, to all life. And thank you for allowing us the opportunity to heal you the way you have healed and continue to heal us. Teach us humility, respect, and the interconnectedness of all things. Beautiful Father Sky, the star nations, all the elders and those who have come before us. We have listened and we can hear your healing songs, feel your drums beating in our chests and see you in the night's sky. We have remembered the way you promised us that we would and we are returning the original instructions to the children of fire, to those who will see to those who will hear, and to those who will feel, and to those who will walk your path. Your fire burns in me and I in you. To the one they call the center, Mammy Doswin, the place where we all come together, Mother Butterfly. Thank you for teaching us the interconnectedness of all things to know ourselves in all things and in all of our relations and for allowing us to act accordingly. You who are the one, the one that is the all and the all that is I, thank you for allowing us to heal and choose our realities at will. Thank you for your medicine, the Bernard clan of Piqua Conagon. Thank you, Anna. So I'm going to introduce Audrey, who has some um, words to sum up. Missed a song. Missed a song. The time's here to change and listen to my own. I'm going to tie up my own underwear here. <laughs> Only you could say that. This is serious. This is to the earth. Hold it closer. Okay. Earth, teach me quiet. As the grasses are still with new light. Earth, teach me suffering as old stones suffer with memory. Earth, teach me humility as blossoms are humble in blooming. Earth teach me caring, as mother, mothers nurture their young. Earth teach me courage, as a tree that stands alone. Earth teach me limitation, as the ant that crawls on the ground. Earth teach me freedom, as the eagle that soars in the sky. Earth teach me acceptance, as the leaves that die each fall. Earth, teach me renewal, as the seed that rises in the spring. Earth, teach me to forget myself, as melted snow forgets its life. Earth, teach me to remember kindness, as dry fields weep with rain. This is from, oh, um, a native speaker. Uh, I forgot to put it on. <laughs>
Well, as you may have realized, the Raju grannies use tunes and write new words to them because we think that our words are better than the original words. <laughs> but for our last song, oh, which will be familiar to all of you, we've used the tune and the words as well because every once in a while we find a song that needs no changing. The grannies invite you to sing along with us as we close this service with Circle Round for Freedom. <laughs> Circle Round for Freedom Circle Round for Peace For all of us in prison Circle for release, circle for the planet, circle for each soul, for the children of our children, keep the circle whole. So we sing it one more time? Oh, yes. yes. Circle round for freedom. Circle round for peace for all of us in prison. Circle for release. Circle for the planet. Circle for each soul. For the children of our children. Keep the circle whole. Yeah, they need some more applause, don't they? For those of you at home, if you have a candle or a chalice burning, now is the time to attend to it again. And these closing words are adapted from the work of Betsy Dar. May the light of this chalice continue to give light and warmth to our community when we are joyful and when we despair. And may we feel the warmth spread from our circle to wider and wider circles until all know they belong to the one circle of life. Should we sing Circle Round for Freedom one more time? Sort of as a host. Circle, circle Round for Freedom. Circle Round for Peace. For all of us in prison. Circle for Release. Circle for the Planet. Circle for each soul, for the children of our children, keep the circle whole. Thanks so much, ladies. <laughs> wanted to acknowledge the words of the reading that I gave for the closing of the word whereby Douglas spotted eagle. So hopefully some of you will stay for coffee and tea and conversation. I'm hoping. Okay, let's go.